Good morning, everyone. Good morning from the greenhouse. It is a Sunday. You can hear the birds singing. I need a bit of a quiet day today. I think when I have like a week of going to London and having events, of which I am very, very fortunate to have, and I feel very, very lucky, and I promise you I don't take it for granted, but in order for me to be able to be the best <laughs> that I can be, I also need these days where I'm just a bit quiet and a little bit insular and I'm doing things that like fill me back up. That might sound really airy fairy to a lot of people, but to me, it's just one of those things that I've noticed about myself. And especially when there's loads of jobs to do around the house, because uh, believe it or not, I love making a house a home and I love making my house lovely. And the big bumbles are in here at the moment, so I apologize if you can hear them. But one of the things that I like doing is keeping my house looking nice, but it often falls into like, chaos there's stuff everywhere there's deliveries there's workmen and i have to say that my greenhouse is my one place that i come and like potter and nothing is the end of the world that happens in here if i can explain that in any better way it's purely for pleasure so if something doesn't work if something um if i struggle with something it's not the end of the world so it's all supposed to be enjoyable if i'm not learning it's not fun and I'm not learning if I'm not making mistakes and things going wrong. And it gives me a lot of like grounding in here. There are a lot of words that are gonna turn people right off in those sentences. But what I mean by that is like nothing is catastrophic in here. If it's all just being cultivated for the joy of it. If something doesn't work, it just doesn't work. And we try again a different way. And that's what I really like about it. Because I think I exist in a world obviously in my job where everything feels catastrophic. Everything is like the end of the world all of the time. And so this is like my little space of calm and beauty. However, if I don't get in here because it is one of those places purely for joy, um, sometimes things start to look a little bit, you know, worse for wear. Oh, a little bumblebee sleeping in there. So I need to have a little bit of a trim up of things. My tulips, I think, might need a little bit of help standing up. I might go and trim some birch uh, birch twigs to help them stand up um, and look a little bit better. I'm going to trim some dead leaves. I've already given things a water. Sweet peas are coming up, but I have something very exciting to show you in the beds. We have the first sprouts coming up in the beds, which are my broad beans that I, that I thought were gone. So I've got some backups in case anything does go wrong, but I've got my backup broad beans. I've got my shears. So what I'm gonna start by doing is when it comes to the hyacinths, I'm going to take off any of the sort of dying and wilting flowers and let the other ones sing. Um, I've got some primroses that need a little bit of TLC as well, just probably a bit of a trim back. Um, I still have my raspberry plants here. I've got golden raspberries. No, I've got all gold raspberries. And um, these ones actually came with no information on them, but um, I have to decide where they're gonna go. And raspberries, aren't so, you know, I might just put them in that bed there, but there's not a huge amount of sunlight there, and I feel like I'll end up regretting that, but. But anyway, we're gonna potter. I'm gonna give this a bit of a spruce up and a tidy up um, and a, a bit of a sweep out. So let's start with the flowers. As you can see here, we've got some browning leaves, some dead flowers. So I'm just gonna chop these off and let the new ones, because there's new little buds coming through underneath and you want them to be able to sing their hearts out. So a little bit of a spruce up. Obviously flowers are unable to continuously bloom, um, contrary to pop popular belief. So it's good to give the, the dying and the dead a bit of a um, cut back and literally see it like transforming the plant as we're here. And he's just realized that his bees are having some water. So when you have like, when there's like water like this, yeah, they say that you should like fill it with things that they can land on and drink. Yeah, maybe we should get some pebbles but in there. They're starting. I think they're learning that if we land here, we can sip here. Okay. So they have got lots of landing space. Oh, okay. But obviously, there's been a couple of. Yeah, there always is. They like they they obviously just go in and they don't realise. Yeah. So do you think maybe we should put some pebbles in here? It would still look nice, won't it? Because it'll fill up with water, but it'll still have pebbles in it. And so it means that they'll be able to get to it. land on this as well. 
Yeah, but I think that's where they're getting too wet and... And, dr- drown. and drowning. Anyway, I've asked Mr Mill and Gordon to come out. I was going to ask, well, I was actually going to do this myself. Um, as you know, our garden furniture was delivered and um, we are using a makeshift table. This is usually one that I use to set up tables outside the greenhouse. However, what I realised when I walked past is the dining table legs actually fold down and these are coffee table legs. These are coffee table legs that fold out to make it a coffee table. So I thought it careful because that's rusty water. I was going to do this myself, but I'm very happy that Ali has come out to help me. But I just think it will make us feel a little bit more like this space is usable. (laughs) I'd love to have seen you do that. Really? Is that heavy? Oh, right. It's so funny though, I I felt like I remembered that this had two different types of of legs and then I walked past and I saw it and I thought, well, whilst we're waiting to find the perfect coffee table, we've got this little, this little uh, makeshift one. See, that's brilliant. We just put a little pot on it. Yeah. Go team. Yeah, so if I just get some little potted flowers on here. In fact, I can put the rosemary on here. That'll do for now. Perfect. (laughs) Bizarrely, I almost feel like we don't need another table. I feel like this is the perfect use for this table because I use this as a, like, outdoor dining table for the kitchen garden and I can do makeshift. This is actually perfect because then I can just use this when we, when I have tables at the kitchen garden. Yeah, exactly. This is amazing. I feel like we've managed to achieve here a very versatile functional table because this originally was very rarely used because typically when you set up a table, you only use one of them and you have two. So now we can utilise this as a coffee table in general. You can still eat it as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. In general, people would just eat. People would just eat like this. You set up a dining table. No. This would be a bit more casual. We have like a kids table down here usually when we have like too much of the family. So this works. One thing we might want to get for these uh, sofas is just throw so we can throw over. Because obviously when barbecue food is sticky and barbecuey and saucy and This is just exactly. And... <laughs> you can tell this man Hello. wants. Yeah. <laughs> I need to send the cushions off to be made like our other cushions as well. They need to be recovered, won't they? Well, yeah, maybe you can get a throw at the same time. Yeah. Throw over them to protect them. Yeah. Well, maybe we can wrap them in plastic. No, maybe just, just shrink wrap everything. <laughs> but no, very, very happy. I've not actually seen it with the cushions though. I really do want to see it with the cushions on and see what that looks like. And obviously because we have the wood yeah. everywhere in the garden, yeah, it, yeah. it just feels like it ties it. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have been lovely to have had a stone table. I think we would we would still be over the moon for the stone table. Yeah. But why? Why spend money on it when you have to? When you don't need to, yeah. Now, whenever I go up to the hose spout, I have to think to myself, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. And that's when you know that you've had a tradesman for a husband. (laughs) Now, this is actually, it doesn't need watering because it's got its watering system. So we'll give this one a water. into the greenhouse and giving my plants some TLC. Now, what I'm thinking about doing is snipping some beech twigs and using them to prop up my tulips and just make it look a little bit more ornamental because things are flopping over and um, they need a bit of a helping hand. So I think I'll take some from the bottom because you don't really see much of this um, in the spring, summer anyway. So I'm gonna snip some of these bits. I didn't want to take too many of them, so I'm going to see how these ones hold up first and then snip some more. So with this twig, we've got two on here that I think we can use, so I can just snip this off. Come on. 
Don't fail me now. Can you even see what I'm doing? <laughs> works quite well to be honest. By the way guys, I can't see anything. The sun is so bright in here and I think the pollen is making my eyes a little bit blurry so I can't actually see anything. It is totally working. Obviously you can forage these from the woodland floor, you can pick them up on dog walks. I'm just taking these because I know that those are at the bottom, they're not going to be seen and they're still nice and sturdy as well. I think one of these pots is going to have to go out on the new coffee table. It's made me so happy. Let's go get some more. Gloomy up there, but I had to do it. Hello gorgeous. I had to do it. I put the tulips out on the table and then I was like, right, that's it. I'm unboxing the, the cushions. I don't care. I need to see what it looks like. I'm not going to get the sofa out because there are some big clouds and I'm going to need to run these all in but I'm over the moon I'm going to rip those labels off but I think this is exactly what we wanted for this space and we are so happy as you can see we have <sighs> we have little broad beans you come in to inspect my love you're inspecting. Yeah, we've got quite a few of them coming up. You agree? Time has come for the broad beans. My next job is to get these little sprouted nasturtiums into some seed trays. So that is what I'm going to do. Goodness me, it's like I've got a cold again. My nose is streaming. I have never had hay fever, but the last two years I've started getting it. I just, I can't understand. But anyway, I've popped the nasturtiums in. Now I'm growing the nasturtiums as companion plants for my raised beds so that they can be planted with the vegetables because they're a really good deterrent for like flies and, and pests and things like that. But I wanted to do some different colors. So, so far the purple emperor have uh, sprouted so I've popped those in some of them anyway I'm gonna keep doing some more in the sprouters but I've just basically um, chucked soil into all of the seed trays and I I'm just gonna throw some bits and pieces in so I've got some cucumbers which are cucumber la diva um, I might do some artichokes I'm just going to throw everything in basically. Now you can grow nasturtiums directly in the ground but I wanted to be able to place them um, properly uh, and make a bit of a spectacle of the flowers as well so um, I'm going to start them off in seed trays which is good and I feel like they always look like um, they look like they complement the flowers of courgettes and bits and pieces like that. Well, that is a third seed tray sown. Got a whole one of seed, sweet peas over here. And I find this fascinating because these were all uh, sown in exactly the same sort of way, especially these ones. And yet none of my swan lakes have come up yet. We've got the royal whites, we've got some pinks, we've got some Windsors, and there's a couple of Wills and Kate, or William and Kate in there, which I'm really happy about. So I've got a variety. The only one I've not got is Swan Lake, but luckily we've got Royal White, so that will um, diversify the colour collection when it comes to planting them out. In here I've gone for the nasturtiums, I've done some cucumber, lediva, I've done some monge too. Now these seeds were actually quite old, so I don't have high hopes for these, but we shall see. I'll order some new ones just in case. And then I've done some more cucumbers, so I'm going to give this a water. And then what I'm going to try and do is prepare another seed tray ready for some April planting. I've just started laying out some seeds and 
Lots of them are pumpkins at the moment, but I am going to do so much sweet corn, you have no idea. Please tell me this sets your heart on fire as much as it does mine. I am all ready to sow um, April's seeds with this, this little seed tray here. And my seed trays fit it perfectly. <laughs> I actually cannot cope with how good this looks. Everything is just feeling very, very approachable and easy to do. I've laid out my seeds there and I'll just keep adding to there so that when April comes, I'm just ready to throw in the seeds. I've ordered myself some more potting, uh, seed potting mix as well so that I can fill these up, do the dibbing and they're ready to go. The last job of the day is just to give it a good tidy up in here, a good sweep out and shut up shop. We have a tidied greenhouse ready to shut up shop. I couldn't resist getting out the sofa cushions. However, I haven't asked Ali yet, but I think we might be missing a cushion. I'm thinking maybe someone didn't count, <laughs> but no trouble. Look how lovely this area looks. Oh. Final job of the day. I'm gonna refill the ice maker, do the chickens, and then I should be able to relax. I've got to refill their corn supplies first. I can't see anything. Everything's just blurry. It's going to be a nightmare. You even think about it, Beatrix. Ah. Good morning everyone. I am up with the birds and it is just spectacular. Good morning everyone. We are out in the garden because it's six in the morning and how can you not love being up at this time? I just, I just don't know. There was lots of conversation on um, one of my TikToks that was like, what time do you get up in the morning if 10 p.m. is past your bedtime? Well, it's just gone six o'clock and I've done a walk down Honeybee Walk and I've been to watch the sunrise. I don't even think the chickens are up yet. I think we need to change the time again on their, um, on their door because they should be up now. They'll be very upset. I woke up this morning and I've hit 1.4 on Instagram, which is a lovely milestone to hit. I'm very, very grateful. But morning. No, it's a beautiful morning. I didn't say the sun. Well, it, it can't. <laughs> it's a beautiful morning. It's a beautiful morning. It's all fo all foggy over there. Half an hour early to get out to a grey day. Also, we need to change the chickens' timer because they should be out. Beautiful morning. <laughs> I'm getting Ali out of bed. <laughs> also, the crows are really uh, noisy at this time of year. Um, but I also, I opened my phone and 
um, I found, I was served a video where someone had done like a bit of a talking piece about me and my career and Evergreen and things like that. Um, and this is always a funny thing to navigate and I probably haven't navigated these things very well in the past, but it was actually a pleasant surprise for me. It was nice that the comments were like really positive, which is hasn't always been the case. And I think that you might have noticed it if you follow me on TikTok, I've become a lot more chatty on there. I think I got my approach wrong on TikTok to begin with. I think I, I'm so sorry about the noise, but I think I, I was trying to make my videos short because that was what I knew TikTok was supposed to be. It was supposed to be this space where you're it's like very snappy content. And the content that I was producing, I was trying to make it too short, which gave no room for a personality, for anyone to know like who I was as a person. I think on, on YouTube, we've got like a really good common ground where we kind of know the ins and outs of, I know my audience quite well. You guys know me really well, so benefit of the doubt is much easier. Um, but on TikTok, it was I didn't realise it was a whole new audience. I was, I've always been quite of the understanding that like audiences are quite similar, but TikTok was completely different. And so I was just putting out these um, videos that were very like da -da 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 -da. and I didn't realise that like my personality was being completely lost in the process. And so obviously I've naturally navigated to try and like put that back into my content. So I think that people are getting the, <laughs> the vibe that actually she's not a robot first and foremost. It was just really nice because it was talking about Evergreen launching in the US and, and the differences between that. And it's something that I've really, really noticed in like how my content is received by um, my American audience versus my English. And um, I... It's a, it's a very different experience. Um, neither is right nor wrong, but, but it's a very different experience and it's, it's quite lovely to see that um, difference as well. Obviously there's other things that are always mentioned in these things. Like I remember I was served a video where someone had done a talking piece on someone else and it was just me mentioned in the comments and there's always someone else mentioned and brought into it and you're compared to somebody else. And I think that it's sort of the natural thing that we as women do is we like compare each can compare each other. I don't think there's ever been a time where I haven't had someone saying, oh, Lydia's copying this person, Lydia, Lydia's copying this person. I think especially when there's been like friendships in places. Naturally, when you have a friendship, you have a lot of common interests um, for the most part. And so I think that there's always gonna be those comments. And for me, it's, it, it's something that I'm very much used to. I wish I was in focus though. Do you think you could focus on me and, and not the, the solitary beehive behind me? And I think that like, the reality is, is that if anyone cares enough, they'll go and put a timeline together of when things happened. And I think that instead of me defending myself on those points, especially, it's always like if someone wanted to find the facts in those things and the timestamps and when things happened, then they could. And I just think that sometimes it's just a, they don't want to know the facts. It's just more about comparing people to, to each other. And naturally where there are friendships or where there have been friendships, it's, you're gonna have common interests and common like crossovers. As much as we like to think of ourselves as complete individuals, like we do, <laughs> we do cross over. And so I feel like that's a natural thing that just, in, it's, it's like a culture in women, isn't it? That we just always feel the need to compare whether it's ourselves, whether it's other people. And so I always kind of expect that stuff. It was just a, a pleasant surprise. A pleasant surprise, first of all, because I think with all of those things, naturally when you see your name mentioned, sometimes those comment sections can become an opportunity for people to just like really like go in, <laughs> like take the gloves off and just go in <laughs> straight for the jugular. And it can be quite hard in those situations, but in all honesty, it's nothing that I haven't worked really hard on myself to be prepared for. I think in the past, I've always come from a place of like defense. And now it's more of just a, a really happy thing to eat that even someone would wanna talk about me. <laughs> just nice way to start the day, a milestone and someone talking about your career, which you don't often think is very relevant to be talked about, so it's nice. 
it's just one of those funny experiences that you have online that you like no one prepares you for no one tells you what it's going to be like when someone's talking about you and you just have to sit there <laughs> and hello my boy it's me it's me my love it's me good morning good morning yes you can't see them but the dogs are out but yeah, no one prepares you for this stuff. It's what I think they probably do now, but they didn't back in the day. But like, it's essentially if you were to if you were to liken it to when you were at school, it would be like walking into a classroom and having to sit down and sit quietly whilst the teacher and all of the students discuss you and discuss things that maybe have been said about you that aren't true or um, rumours or mistakes that you've made perhaps you've like I don't know like relationships that haven't lasted and you just have to sit there silently and just let it all unfold and not defend yourself and it's like <laughs> anyway I'm gonna go get myself ready for the day because I'm starting um I'm, I'm, I've got PT today so yeah starting on the right foot the dogs are out the birds are singing and I'm ready for a very, very good Monday, and I hope you guys are too. But this is why I get up in the morning, because I just, <laughs> I just love it. Good morning everyone, the door's just gone, so you will hear a very grumpy porter telling the, whoever it is that's dead to ring our doorbell off. Porter tells everyone off. Um, he's very, very grumpy. I'm just getting myself ready for the day and popping on some of the Swede powder because this is, now I have been having so many questions. I think it's more on Tik, I think it's more on TikTok, um, but also a little bit on here about my skin recently. And I feel like I should do a proper like full breakdown of everything. And when I say that, I mean everything that I've had done, um, but also the products that I'm using. But at the moment, my base is these two together. So I use the Chantecaille in cream um, and then I dust the Swede powder over the top and it is so beautiful and it looks like skin. I think that probably sounds like it's quite heavy, but it really, that's like super lightweight and it's like you could you can see your skin still through it which is what I love like I just don't I just want it to look like skin that's what I want and then I'm using underneath my eyes the beauty pie illum illum illuminizer it's an exciting date because I am shooting something that I've been blooming talking about for a very long time so yes not giving any hints I'm going to be shooting just a little uh, image for them for like point of sale and things like that because it's going to be exclusively available somewhere very very special and we actually have a date for launch which is a very very prominent date but I'm not going to announce anything yet you already know you know everything you you know but um, I just it's literally just purely because I um, you never know when these things are going to change lots of things happen like delays like supply shortages, you just never know. And and so I'm quite an open book and I just think that I'm just trying to sort of keep it under wraps. But it's very exciting, it's finally gonna be coming because it has been something that I've been working on for a while. And it hasn't taken this long, but it has just been one of those things that we like, we want to get it right, we wanna do it at the right time. And also with delays, with everything that happens in the world naturally, these days, so many like, um, there's so many problems and so many world situations that have knock on effects. And so um, 
you just have to consider everything and that's why I don't want to get your like hopes up and actually give you a date so I'm just gonna be elusive to it and really annoying I'm just popping on the the Swede blush as well because it always looks so lovely on the skin this is pretty much like my it's pretty much my my everyday makeup and what I've been wearing to like most events as well and I cannot tell you how many like compliments I get in person now that I'm wearing like less foundation. It is a real, real treat. This is one thing that I've realized about myself. I really love this industry and I don't want it to be a different industry. And I love the fact that we have always been the hustlers. Like we are the people that do the things that they were doing with like a big shoot location. We were doing it in our bedrooms. And so for me, I, naturally we've got a studio down the road i could book the studio and and make it very easy however i love shooting things me and ali with what we have and creating beautiful things that way because that is the essence of this industry and i i often get a little bit worried that we're getting lost in the glitz and glamour like there's i i just I love the homeliness of our industry. I love the the friendliness, the the arms wide openness of our industry, and I have to make sure that I do. I've, I've done the fancy stuff, but I have to make sure nowadays that like I remind myself that first we've got to have balance, but second of all, it's not all glitz and glamour. Sometimes you've got to be the grafters, and we should celebrate the grafters. Thank you for coming to my TED talk <laughs> on being an influencer. Oh dear. Also, excitingly. The floor is going down in the bathrooms today, so I'm gonna see if we can go and have a sneak peek. Come on. Oh my goodness me. Look at this beautiful cobbled floor. I'm obsessed. I'm absolutely obsessed. First look at the packaging. I'm obviously gonna desaturate this clip so that you can't see the color of the packaging because I think it'll give it away, but dee 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 looks so good and this is the color that I wear like the most we not have autofocus anymore <laughs> um this is wild rose and it's very very lovely in fact is what I've got on now which is just over the rose thorn lip liner it's the perfect kind of just like rich but pared back look it just looks like your lips but better which I love so this is what I'm going to be shooting as usual I am all dressed up with nowhere to go <laughs> and I'm waiting on my husband because he's um in the shower and he's going to shoot my content for me which I love I just love the way that Ali uh, captures my content but seeing as I'm all dressed up in this dress I thought I'd tell you a story <laughs> it's full of chat in this video but I thought I'd tell you a story I stumbled across this dress on Instagram. I had actually stumbled across it. I think I'd already followed the brand or something like that, but then lots of people sent me this dress, like this dress here. Their marketing, their shoots with it is all very Lydia Millen-esque. <laughs> and I, I honestly, I don't think I've ever seen a dress like it where I've been like, oh my gosh, I need to have that dress in my wardrobe. And you know what I'm like, I'm happy to spend money on like, a really special piece. This dress humbled me in ways that I have never been humbled <laughs> because um, it it is sadly completely out of my price range and I know that there will be people thinking there is nothing out of my price range and trust me people there are things out of my price range. I am not like I'm not I don't think I'm as wealthy as you think I am and Oh my goodness me when i got the email because we inquired i wanted to to buy it and um you know i've got like oscar de la renta in my wardrobe and they sent me a wonderful dress and and all of these kinds of things i'm not going to tell you the price because um i don't think it's important it's just too expensive for me and i can take that on the chin um it's definitely like way more than any wedding dress i've ever heard of um even like Philippa Lepley wedding dresses so um and this was obviously for a dress that I the way that it was shot I don't actually know what the fabric is of it it might be silk it might be whatever I don't know but it this was like a day dress for me this was something to be worn with like you know sandals and a basket bag and that kind of thing and um sadly you know there are things I'll spend more money on like handbags <sighs> this dress but what I accept is that I can't afford it I just can't afford it and that's the nature of life and that that is it there will always be people that can afford these things like i know that that will be pocket change to some people it's not pocket change to me it's a mortgage on a house 
and <laughs> I'm okay with not, not doing that yet. I can't say in the future that that won't change because if you had asked me 10 years ago if you thought that I would spend what I do on Hermes bags, I would have laughed in your face. I would have literally laughed in your face. So never say never. But I was very, 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 very grateful when I shared the um, initial picture of the, bat, the, the, the dress. I was very grateful that the brand actually sent me um, a gift, which I'm very grateful for. And if you haven't seen Paolo Sebastian on Instagram, where have you been? <laughs> where have you been? Because not only are their dresses absolutely spectacular, but their silk scarves are some of the most beautiful I have ever seen. And they do twillies as well. And I find it so difficult to find twillies that like are my style. I'm not a colorful twilly kind of gal. And when I saw this, it's just, I, I feel so grateful. It is unbelievable. And it's so nice to just like highlight a brand. I mean, I had more followers than them when I shared that, um, picture of the dress, they are gonna be, have, they're gonna have more followers than me in no time at all. And they'll be like, oh cute, remember that time when we sent Lydia Millen something? Yeah, let's not send her anything else. <laughs> but it's this beautiful silk, neutral, Paolo Sebastian twilly. Like imagine that in your hair, or, oh, it could look really cute in a bun. <gasps> I love it. And they also sent me a very, very lovely, I actually haven't opened this yet. I kind of peeked at the twilly and I'm totally gonna put it back together and open it on TikTok. <laughs> uh, I don't know what this is. What is this? Oh, I think this will be their catalog. <gasps> so this is the dress. This is the dress. Oh, this is it. This is an actual, this is <laughs> just to torture me. <laughs> this is the dress that I will never own. And look at that. Even if I could just wear it, it's all like, all of the photography is like in, um, it, it's like she's like hanging her linen up on the, on the washing line and things like that. It's just like, <laughs> love. And the thing that's so special about this collection is it's dedicated to his nonna. The collection's called Allora Domenica, which uh, Domenica is nonna. Domenica. Obviously, I have Nonna Maria. My Nonna taught me to sew when I was just three years old. Not only did she encourage me to create, play and learn, but there was an unspoken language in our family to always pursue our dreams. Allora Domenica is a classic but playful Mediterranean inspired collection with a gelato themed color palette, iconic 50s silhouettes of structured waist, headscarves and off the shoulder straps, which I just love, love, love that sort of Dior new look 50s silhouette, which, ugh. So anyway, I have a very, very special, special gift there from Paolo Sebastian. And I haven't opened this one either yet, so this is going to be quite special. Oh my goodness. This has just gone to the top of my favorite scarves. This is like a late summer wildflower field because there's sort of wheat and then there's the wildflowers in there, there's butterflies. <gasps> the colors and the tones and the richness of this is, oh my gosh, the doves. Oh. I feel so, so lucky to have this because his pieces are stunning. I'm gonna wear this to see my very own nonna as well. I have been waiting to unbox those with you. They have been sat there for so long. I'm now gonna message them and thank them myself because even if I can't ever own that dress, which sad times, I um, feel very, very lucky to have these pieces. Say hello to our studio. <laughs> I'm just gonna take the uh, art and the basket <coughs> down because um, it gets such nice light here. The art down? Yeah. Well done. It's technically a piece of art, isn't it? Oui, oui. Oh, uh, mushroom. Yeah, so I think what you want, yeah, this is what we want, is, is more like that. Yeah, that's fine. I think if we aim for this, because this is the product, this is not the product. So we can just, and we can always just. just, needs to just it's all about line. Yeah. You know? So like, the closer that is to you, yeah. the more it focuses you.
to some food, Lummy. You should have said. Oh my goodness me. Do you want to just quickly film a little application thing? Just so that Of course I, I do. I, I really want to. It's actually what <laughs> I was lusting for. <laughs> just like me applying the lip liner and then me applying the lipstick and then that can just be something that I've got to post. It's just for me. Should we get the plug socket out of that one then? Well, if I sit down on the floor or something and we do it a bit closer. Yeah, okay. If all of these clips are in black and white, it's because I can't show you the packaging. <laughs> but looking good. So we have like the perfect neutral on this side. And then this side is like, it looks really intense and it looks quite frightening, but in all honesty, it is like the hottest, balmiest, perfect lick of spring summer color. And I'm so, so excited for you to, to get to try these. You get to try them, you can try them. No, for them to try them. I've been trying them for blooming months. I'm still in my outfit, but the Tyler has gone. And apparently he has put all of the floor down in both of the bathrooms. So we're gonna inspect the second bathroom. <gasps> Obviously, this is the same as our hallways, but it is looking so lovely. There will be a wooden threshold here to join it to the carpet, but such great progress. I reckon tomorrow he'll probably end up grouting, and then because our tiles from Carpietra have been delivered, which you will find here, these little marble herringbone just like in our bathroom you can't really see them i'm not showing you very well excuse me excuse me <laughs> but we are all finished it this is my favorite this is my favorite if i could do it all again in the hallways i would have gone for the cobbles i panicked at the last minute I wish I'd gone for the cobbles because it's such a big space that it could have taken it. But I'm making up for it with the brick floor in the basement, which we have already paid for and is very much being delivered very soon. Because once we have finished this bathroom and the bedroom next door, we will start downstairs finally. I've managed to save enough pennies. Outfit of the day, which uh, I've now changed into halfway through the day. But I've got my Reese jeans on in the ivory, a little N peel cashmere jumper, which is just the perfect fit, such an easy wear. I probably should have steamed it, but I'm only at home. And uh, if I was going out, I'd wear my Jean Vito Rossi's, probably a little jacket, and that would be me. Do you know what? I think I'll probably wear this tomorrow with my Todd's coat. So if you see it tomorrow, you didn't see nothing okay well this is quite the video of ups and emotional roller coasters i've just booked and I, I genuinely i feel like i might cry with this i've just booked a brand that i have never worked with before i've never like been paid to work with to work with them on on something and i really hope this doesn't come across as me bragging this is it's so hard to explain when it comes to this industry, but to be recognized by a brand that you have loved for so long and to get to work alongside them. And, and when they turn around to you and they say, we just want your content. It's one of those moments where you're like, wow, this is such a cool industry. And this is what I mean when I say that I, I, I really am passionate about this industry as it is. I'm not, I'm not so fussed about being a sort of like someone who segues into something else. No, I really, really love this industry. And I think that if we're like careful with it, it will be a really amazing thing. But I have just booked this campaign and I, I genuinely, I didn't know whether it was going to come off. And I've been sort of here, there and everywhere over the weekend because I have waited 12 years, I have waited 12 years to work with this brand. I've never worked with them, never. But I have loved them since the beginning of my career. 
And when I say I love them, that doesn't mean I just blindly love everything that they've ever done, by the way. I am someone that will always say if I think that like this collection didn't speak to me or this perfume I didn't think was very nice. This is what, what builds authenticity with your audiences. And that's really important to me. So it doesn't mean that I've just blindly loved everything that they've done. So if you go and find a video where I say I didn't like a bloomin' candle, then <laughs> your, your expectations of authenticity is wrong. But this is such a, mo a moment for me. Like in the, in the most cringy way possible, this is such a moment for me. I am over the moon that I get to do this because it's on a subject that I am really passionate as well about as well. I don't know if you'll be able to tell from this video. When you're watching this, will it have already gone live? I don't know. In fact, if it has already gone live, it's with Joe Malone and it's over on my Instagram right now. And I can't believe it. I've, ne I, I've never worked with them. I know lots of people thought that my wedding was sponsored by Joe Malone. It wasn't. They were just very, very kind and very, very, they, like they gifted me with something that I could not have afforded to do at my wedding at that time. And they did all of the, the candles. We kept those candles. I think we had one, I think we've still got one of the candles from my wedding. In fact, we definitely do. There's a pomegranate noir, with some, like one of the big ones somewhere. <laughs> and I'm a bit giddy, I apologize. But when I tell you I have loved this brand, like when I started like having a career of my own and I was able to like buy the expensive candle, you'll know it's taken me up until this last year to actually burn these things properly, like where I actually enjoy them and I'm not feeling guilty for burning them because I'm not going to buy another one. And so I feel like so many people can relate on that when it's like you've got that special candle, that special brand, like that you just don't want to use all of the products because you know that this is a one-time thing. <laughs> and so Jo Malone has always been that pinnacle brand for me. I will, I chose to wear their fragrance on my wedding day. We did the, the scent pairing. Um, Peony and Blush Suede has been one of my all-time fav favorite fragrances. Their most recent one, which was English Pear and Sweet Pea. When, that fragrance. I mean, I even got my stickers done, like the fra the, the stickers on the Jo Malone bottles. <laughs> so if you are watching this, maybe you've watched me for, for a few years, just know that I could literally cry right now because, and I'm not, I'm not even going to try and play it cool. I should, I should try and play it cool like, and, and not get emotional about this, but I, I, I can't. I actually can't. I, I, this is just so much for me, so much. And I hope that you, like, oh, I'm not even going to get, I'm not going to do it. It's been a while since I've cried on my vlogs. I'm not doing it. But my goodness me, everything that brand embodies, I aspire to, to bring that magic into my own brand. And so, fun fact, <laughs> when I launched my brand, I actually used the Jo Malone boxes as like the epitome of uh, what I wanted to create. Obviously, we just don't talk about that now, but <laughs> it was that magic I wanted people to feel. And anyway, I'm making dinner. Ali it has just popped out. Well, I'm not actually making dinner. <laughs> I'm giddy, sorry. We're having dinner tonight, obviously. <laughs> I'm a mess. I'm a mess. Um, dinner is currently in the preparation process, is what I'm trying to say. Ali is doing the chicken and I am making the chips. I want to do some, um, I might do like peas and chips, but I have to make the chips from scratch. So um, if you're a fan of Nara Smith, <laughs> we're going to make some homemade chips because that's just, it's just how I like it, to be honest. I, I like homemade chips now rather than the oven chips in the freezer bags so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna give them a wash give them a quick once over and then prep the veg for, for dinner and not cry whilst I'm doing it <laughs> and I know by the way I know that there will be people that are watching this and they're annoyed by the fact that this has happened that I'm happy like this and that I've had this opportunity I've been there too I know what it's like when you're watching someone and things are going great for them and you feel like things aren't going great for you. I know what it's like. Trust me, I know what it's like. What you've got to do is all I would say. Just log off the video now and let yourself feel it. Like I'm not saying don't 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 acknowledge those emotions. 
but know that, I, and I mean this because I've been there, that you will experience these highs and it will make it so much easier when you feel this way to be able to like remember that this is just a moment and it will pass and you will start experiencing the things that you want to experience, I promise. Um, but for now, curl up with a good book, maybe watch someone else's videos or, or tune into something different, something that you know, like Downton Abbey that will just like lift up your spirits and um, do you think? Do you think? And it will get better, I promise. Right, back to my chips. By the way, I'm not trying to peel these properly, I'm just taking all of the little sprouts off. I don't know if I'm supposed to do that, but we're doing it. Do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pack up some eggs and I'm gonna take some fresh eggs for the girls at Joe Malone tomorrow because you have no idea how happy and how grateful I feel to have this opportunity. You have no idea. And this would be the equivalent of a quick dinner for us nowadays. We used to have oven chips all the time, but now if it's not made from scratch, I'm not having it. And it just tastes so much better. I have also found a good mayonnaise to have that is basically 100% avocado oil. So it's taken out any of the UPF in that as well. So you can buy it. Yeah. So I can still make my mayonnaise at home, but I can have some stored just in case. So this hunter-gatherer one is very good.